Okay, so today we're taking a look at this. This is the Hom FPV Micron 25. It's a two inch Cinewhoop. That is really impressive for the price and performance that you get. Hom FPV is relatively new in the FPV world, but we're gonna take a closer look at this little Whoop. Let's get started. What's good everybody, Ken here, you're watching Original Dobo, and today we take a look at another Cinewhoop. It's been a little while since I've reviewed any sort of quad, and uh, I have been sent to me the Micron 25. This is a really interesting little Whoop. It's super compact, it reminds me a little bit of the Beta FPV 95X, but just a little bit smaller. It almost looks like a really, really tiny Taycan 25. However, I think that the build quality here on this little guy is exceptional and it also is a lot quieter. So what do we have here? Well, this is an all digital FPV build. The majority of the quads that you get from Hom FPV will be digital. This has a Cadex Vista outfitted with the Nebula camera. So while the Nebula is not my first choice, I think they did a good job with being able to keep weight down and fit everything into this really, really tiny package. This build runs 3S batteries. It has an F4 20 amp flight controller on board. It's an all-in-one ESC flight controller. So you're able to fit a full-size Cadex Vista um, into the unit here, so all-in-one. Now, I don't have any sort of receiver mounted onto this particular quad because I wanted to keep the weight down and I couldn't get any Nano RX receivers for Crossfire. It seems like they're out basically everywhere. So I am just using this with my DJI FPV controller. And from what I've seen, it works plenty okay. Although I have gotten really accustomed to the Tango 2 RC. Now the motors on here are 1104 6500 KV motors. I really can't see the brand of them. It looks like they are a HOM FPV motor. It looks like they do have branding on there, but in my testing, they work fine. They don't seem to get very warm and the sound of these are incredibly quiet. It does have a four blade prop um, from Gemfan and they work really well, provides definitely enough of lift. Like I said, this is a 3S build, so you're not gonna wanna put anything like a 4S LiPo on here just because you may have some issues with heating the motors or popping the ESC because it is a 20 amp ESC, so you don't get a lot of headroom, unfortunately. In my testing, I'm getting about five minutes of flight out of this particular build here, and that is with running a naked GoPro as well. So that is something to keep in mind. If you're gonna be using a naked GoPro, you're gonna get roughly about four and a half to five minutes of flight, which is a little bit better than the Beta FPV build. So this does seem to be a little bit more efficient, at least in my flights and testing, but your mileage may vary depending on your weather. Takeoff weight without anything additional is 119 grams. So 119 is what is read on the scale. Um, I weighed this before and it actually came in under, under 249 grams. So this battery here is a uh, 750 mAh. It's an R-Line 750. So you can run anything from a 650 to an 850 according to HOM FPV. So I'll put that on there. With the battery, you're at about 184. This little strap here is something that I made to be able to power the GoPro. Something that I found with using naked GoPros is the fact that I'm always fiddling, trying to get it to start recording. And if I'm running off a of quad power, well, that means I'm wasting all that heat sensitivity in trying to get the GoPro going. So what this does is it just plugs into the balance lead. And then what we can start to do is get our GoPro recording and then plug the quad in so you don't have to worry about uh, the air unit or the flight controller overheating. And another nice thing about this is that I don't have to constantly wire these into different, uh, different uh, quads. So that is nice. Now this is set up to be a uh, 3S plug-in, but you can make these for anything. It's just a simple balance plug-in lead and then using the uh, beta FPV plug, but really easy to do. So let's go ahead and put these on here. So we'll put that on there. That's 187 with the GoPro. You should be right at about 214, so 214 full takeoff weight, GoPro battery, everything ready to go. So there is a lot of headroom here and in my testing, that weight does make it a little bit easier for this thing to get blown around. If you don't want to decase a GoPro, I would suggest looking into maybe the wingsuit. It's a little bit bigger of an FPV uh, quad. It's two and a half inches versus the two inches that we see here. So 
That's just something to keep in mind. But decasing a GoPro Hero 6 was really easy and it's totally worth doing. All right. So how'd this thing fly? Well, I did do a couple of test flights with this and I gotta say I was pretty impressed with it. I did notice there was a little bit of a bobble in the tune, but that could just be me piloting. It was a little bit windy today and having these ducks on does get it shuffled around the wind. I did go ahead and fly in angle mode and in acro and in both scenarios, this thing performed incredibly well. I did feel that it did perform slightly better in the acro mode than it did the angle mode, but that's honestly to be expected anytime you take one of these outside. Now this is in a pusher configuration, and honestly I think pusher is my new preferred way to fly when it comes to Cinewhoops. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I mounted the GoPro on and ran real steady, and I think I got some really, really smooth cinematic shots with this. It just gives you a great dynamic because of how tiny this is, you can really push it through those small spaces. Now there was a moment where I was flying and I wanted to fly the uh, waterfall here in town and um, some reason the GoPro footage corrupted so I had to use warp stabilizer to try to smooth out the shots, which it worked, not really a preferred choice, but it, it got the job done. I did go ahead and include some DVR footage in this test, which I think it's acceptable. The Nebula camera is not my favorite camera when it comes to digital. It just has a really hard time defining certain things like any of the scraggle in the, the, the brush. It, it um, is about as close to analog or I would say shark bite that you're gonna get running a uh, DJI digital system, unfortunately. So not my favorite camera when it comes to uh, FPV cameras for digital, but it is definitely better than analog. I guess I'll put it like that. So uh, you won't be able to fly this thing like in full acro if you want to do flips or tricks. The washout on this is pretty bad. So keep that in mind. If you think you're gonna be able to do any sort of really, really dynamic tricks with this, not gonna happen because you just don't have enough of power to recover if you are too low to the ground. I did just a quick roll to see what would happen and I barely had enough power to recover and it started pulling too many amps in the recovery. So keep that in mind that this is gonna be really for those slow and tight cinematic shots. In my opinion, I think the tune on this is better than what I've seen on the Beta 95Xs. But again, that's all subjective because you can tune this to your own liking. Um, I do like what they're doing here with these quads. They're really aiming for these digital quads. And what I found is when I first reached out to them, they were really responsive in trying to help me figure out which one was right for me. We finally settled on the Micron 25. Again, they did send this to me for free, but what I found is that their team is really responsive. So if you had a warranty concern or troubleshooting question, um, they're really quick to help. So that is a good thing, um, which again, they're a new team. So they're trying to really get their product out there. But anyways, if you're interested in taking a look at this for yourself a little bit closer, I'll have a link in the description below. You can buy it direct. I haven't seen these at Race Day Quads or Get FPV, so I don't know when they're gonna be a little bit more widely available. But check out the link below if you wanna check out the product. This one right here is 269, which is actually pretty reasonable. You can get it without the air unit for $149. And they also have the wingsuit, which is a slightly bigger frame for just a little bit more. But like I said, I've been really, really happy with this and it's gonna sort of be my go-to because it is so small, I don't have to worry about if I hit somebody, not that I'm looking to hit somebody, but if I have an accident with this, it's not gonna cause any damage, it's not gonna cut somebody up, it's not gonna hurt an animal, it's not gonna hurt a car or anything. It's just a super safe little quad to be flying. Even indoors, it works really well. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll leave you with some test footage from the HOM FPV Micron 25. As always, stay original.